Oh, I'm live. Look at that. It just went live and I wasn't ready. I was getting my phone out of my pocket. Story of my life. Ethel, Ethel read the unprepared. Oh, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I've still got my sound on. Right, okay. Luckily, there's nobody here but me. Me and you, buddy, to see my embarrassment. Nobody, oh, Natalie's here. She'll see my embarrassment. Hi, Natalie. Hi, little Al. <laughs> Hi, Chelsea. Hi, um, Andrea. Good morning, just about everybody. So I've got itchy nose. Just finished a Reese's peanut butter thing of me. I'm all hot and sweaty. It's all, it's all the usual shambles. Joe, Joe, Jason. Good morning, people. It is just about morning. I've managed to squeeze in in time to say good morning rather than good afternoon. Hi, Kath. How are you all? I am a bit later. Good morning, Phoebe. A bit later than usual due to several occurrences. So number one occurrence being that I woke up this morning with a cracking headache and decided not to leave quite so early. I, I, I whacked in some painkillers and sat here rubbing a cold can of Coke on my head and hoping it would clear before I had to get up and go to it. So I went slightly later. Good morning, Death by Glamour. So that was number one reason. Woke up with a headache and didn't get going quite so quick this morning. Number two reason is that Natalie, good morning, Gloria. Natalie, not Natalie resells in the chat, but Natalie Jenkins, my daughter, is a moron who um, managed to put her work keys into the glove box of my car yesterday. She has no recollection of doing it. I know damn well I didn't do it. And then this morning when she was due to open her, her work, she had her work keys to open it. So she rang me and said, have you seen my keys? And I was like, no, no, I haven't seen your keys. And she took the house apart. And then she rang me and said, can you have a look in the car in case they fall out my bag in the car? And for some whim, you know, just on a whim, I opened the glove box and there they were. So I had to go back from the car boot cell to take her keys to her at her work so she could get in before I went on to the second boot. So everything has been... Just delayed a little bit. Good morning, Scooby Shaggy. Good morning, Catherine Graham. Good morning, Anne Isaac, who says, Carla, finally, we've been waiting around for you. We've been sitting around in our dressing gowns, afraid to go start the day in case we missed you. Our laziness is all your fault. Hmm. Just so you know, these things can be watched back at a later date. You don't have to watch me live. You have no excuse for your laziness, apart from the fact that you're a bit slack. That's it. Good morning, Cats Mance. <laughs> So, yeah, combination of headache and stupid daughter meant that I am running much later than usual. Although, having said that, I'm pretty sure this week I came in around about 10 to 12. This week, last week. Because I remember saying, will I get a good morning or will it be an afternoon? I can't remember now. I'm not sure. Maybe it was the week before. Either way, here I am. Here you are. Here the stuff is. Do you want to see it? Two car boots today. Um, the stuff's ended up jumbled in together, though, so I won't know which one came from which because I've unpacked it out of my trolley and into the bags and then brought it into the house and then unpacked it again. And I bought these primarily for me, although I've just tried them on and they're a bit on the tight side. So I will need to decide whether I wear them and hope that they stretch or sell them. There are only two at Sainsbury's, but they are brand new and unworn. They're a size eight and I quite like them. So don't know. I might try and wear them in a bit and see if they'll be a bit more comfortable. So they're long enough. Hi, hyper picker. They're, they're, you know, they're good. They're good in size. They're just a little bit narrower than I would like. And maybe that's because my feet are fat and swollen because of the heat. You know, maybe, maybe. And so, damn it, we've been busted. <laughs> this might be, this might be today's pickup of the day. This is, um, this was 50p. When he said 50p, I could not get my 50p out of him quick enough. It is Salvatore Ferragamo. Now, I've had a lot of joy with Salvatore Ferragamo shoes. Don't see them very often, but if I do see them, I dance around a bit. Uh, Death by Glamour says, while I was having my breakfast waiting for your live, I got lost on a YouTube wormhole and ended up watching videos about a beef between Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. I don't even know who they are. I don't know who they are either. Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. I have no idea who they are, but was it was it exciting? Do I need to go and find that now and watch it? So Salvatore Fer Ferragamo makes shoes and handbags, and apparently they make perfume, which I did not know because I am not in the loop. But inside here... I paid 50p for this, remember? Inside here is a full bottle of Salvatore Ferragamo Signorina Eleganza perfume. Alone retails around about 30 quid. And then also in there, hi Janet, also in there as a tiny hand cream, a lip balm, a cleansing cloth, and a little burble to tell you all about it. Um, it was given away on Singapore Air Airlines, but the fact that the Signorina, the, the per, I can't say it again, the Salvatore Ferragamo Signorina Eleganza perfume retails at 30 quid. The only indication that it was given away on Singapore Airlines is that tiny little bit there. Where's my camera? Tiny little bit there at the top of there on top of the burble. We could lose the burble. We could lose the burble and nobody would ever know. 
Lip balm, hand cream, cleansing towel, eau de parfum. So yeah, we might lose a little bit of bubble. That's got to be, got to be some money in there, hasn't there? Got to be some money. In there. I can't find one like this on eBay. I can find the bottles of perfume. I can find the little um, lip balm and the hand cream. I cannot find the bag. So, so yeah, don't know. Hit me with some price points, people. What do you think? More than 50p. Fairly confident. Even, even if I split it, sell the bag alone, because the bags, are, that's a really nice clutch. Really nice Salvatore Ferragamo clutch. Maybe. Don't know. Don't know. Hit me with your thoughts. Lucy T's in. Good morning. Is it still good morning? Just about. Just squeezing in to say good morning. A Q denim skirt. Not a denim skirt from Q, which is part of Jigsaw. And um, has a rather nice silk, 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 silk blah, 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 blah. rather nice silk scarf belt. You try saying silk scarf belt. Good morning, Saz guest. Um, so that, that was quite nice. That was two pounds. Two pounds. Must say, while well, I remember, just in case there's ladies out there watching, I met another lovely lady at the car boot store this morning. Her name was Monica. She said, good morning, Carlo. And I said, good morning. And she went, you don't know who I am? I was like, no, but good morning. <laughs> she said she's a viewer. She's recently um, fairly new to reselling. She's enjoying watching our videos and learning stuff and having a great time. So hello, Monica, if you're watching, it was nice to meet you this morning. Uh, <laughs> we've also been joined by Lex Oliver. Good morning, Lex. And Sue Erin. Good morning. I hope I haven't missed anyone. And I hope you're all well. I have mugs wrapped up in clothing. So a Walt Disney World dad mug. That was a pound. I told myself I would not buy any more mugs until I have listed. Can you see all the mugs? I have listed some of them, but not very many of them. And I told myself until I had listed those mugs, I would not buy any more mugs. I let myself down. Did you hear the story about the little baby balloon? I will tell you the story of the little baby balloon. You will enjoy this. And if you don't enjoy it, I won't know because I'll be sitting here and you're there. So there's a little baby balloon. And he wants to sleep in mummy and daddy balloon's bed because he doesn't like sleeping in his own bed. And so in the middle of the night, he creeps into mummy and daddy balloon's bedroom. And he tries to squeeze in between them. But mummy and daddy balloon are both quite round and there's not much spare space in their bed. So little baby balloon thinks, what can I do to, to make to make, make a nice play? And in the end, he, he undoes the knot in the bottom of mummy balloon and he lets out a bit of mummy balloon's hair until she's a bit thinner. And that's not enough. So then he undoes daddy balloon and he lets out some of daddy balloon's hair until he's a bit thinner and that's not really enough. And in the end, he undoes his own knot and he lets out some of his hair. And still, by the time he's finished going back from one to the other and himself and doing all three, nobody's got any hair left. They're all flat as pancakes. They're just empty bubbly balloons. But there's a room for him in the bed so he crawls in and he goes to sleep and in the morning when mummy and daddy balloon wake up they are furious and they say to him baby balloon we are so disappointed in you we can't believe you've done this you've let me down you've let your mother down but most of all you've let yourself down Adam, dish! i'm not proud i'm going home now. <laughs> i am quite proud i love that joke i love that joke <laughs> shush andrea don't ruin it <laughs> Lex says I'm looking fabulous, slim and well good this week I stayed the same and when I go tomorrow I will have gained I have not been on plan this week not been on plan at all <laughs> sorry about the joke everybody it's not my best joke it's not my best joke at all I'll save my best joke for another time <laughs> uh, brownies top for a pound <laughs> I do like that one <laughs> Oh, dear. I'm slightly embarrassed now that I've told you the baby balloon joke. All mugs, one pound apart from one which was free. So any mugs I show you, if I get, if I get to, uh, uh, oh, no, in, some of them are 20p. I'm telling lies. It's a lie. Catherine Graves says, do we want to hear a favourite joke? Of course we do, Catherine joke. You get typing while I get showing. So Tigger for a quid. A couple of Starbucks for a quid each. They've all got soft things inside them because I was trying to pad them from getting broken. Now, this is... The large, what's the largest grande, isn't it? This is a medio, this is a grande. There we go. This one was quite nice. This is a Walt Disney World um, Main Street USA Walt Disney World mug. I've not seen this one before with the in the black and white colourway. Uh, that's from Disney Parks, so I guess that's from um, what it says, Main Street USA Magic Kingdom. So I guess that one is from Walt Disney World rather than um, Disneyland Paris or whatever. This one was free. This was from Steve the Carboot Guy. He just chucked in. I've got quite a few of these now, so I might actually manage to make it to a set. 
uh, SI breakable. None of those were the 20p ones. 20p ones must be in the other, in the other bag. Right, Catherine. Catherine's joke. What's the best Christmas present? And everybody's saying, we don't know, Catherine. What is the best? <laughs> Catherine says, a broken drum. You just can't beat it. Way! <laughs> and Sazga's favourite joke is, what time does Sean Con Connery arrive at Wimbledon? Tennis. Everybody's at it now. They're all at it. They're all at it. Oh, um, Electronic Fire is Course says, is this where we go to learn to sell things? No. No, that's not, this is, no, you're in the wrong place. Sorry. Um, I can I can point you in the direction of many places where you can go to learn to sell things. This is where you go to learn how to buy tat. I know how to buy tat. I've got that sorted. And also, if you like to own too many mugs and not list them on eBay, you come here to learn how to do that. Good morning, going on, Grumpy. <laughs> Broken drum, you just can't beat it. I think I paid two quid for this, although I'm not sure it might have been three. It's a blood pressure monitor, Sanitas blood pressure monitor. Um, and it's got all the all the burbly bits in there. And I think it might have been it was either two or three. I feel like it was two. Doubt it myself. These were definitely two each. A couple of bad taste bears. You would think I would learn seven o'clock we're going on grumpiest. You think I'd learn not to buy these damn things because I bought a load before and, and took ages to ship them, but these were at least in their boxes. So this one is Ping. This is the bad taste bear in the micro. The light's a bit bad in here, isn't it, for showing you things like this? That one's Ping. And then, sorry, the bits of polystyrene aren't really going to make me sneeze. I said, bless you to a chap at the car booth this morning when he sneezed, and he turned around and looked at me as if I'd said, fuck you. You don't know if he misheard me or what? Just demonetize my video. <laughs> This one is, what's this one? Ronald. There we go. That's your McDonald's employee spitting in his burger, Ronald. <laughs> so, yeah, I bought these before and had a hell of a job shifting them. I don't know why, because they're usually quite popular. How do you go in, Ronald? So, you think I'd learn, and I plainly don't learn from my mistakes. You can tell I don't know if I'm saying so what you've shown instead of one. Kathy Graham says it can you be used for any any celebration. <laughs> Lex says, yeah, we can all say rude words now. And Brian says, dang, I need to learn to sell things. I used to be able to sell anything I touch. These days I only touch myself and the sales are gone. <laughs> what he's not telling you is his shop's on holiday because he's off gallivanting. So Mags Wood says, hi all, first time in the chat looking for tips on selling tat. Again, no tips on selling tat, just tips on buying tat. I know how to buy tat. I try and sell it, but I don't set myself up as some kind of selling guru. <laughs> uh, Carrie's in. Hi, Carrie. This is Masai. Hoping, hoping it's not fake. I don't know if Masai gets faked. It's the first time I've ever seen... The label just saying Maasai instead of the Maasai Clothing Company. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. It just means I don't know stuff, which is not news to most people. There you go. Maasai Clothing Company, hopefully. Um, silk? Viscous? Not sure. Viscous. Lovely word, that. Viscous. Bear in mind the Maasai Clothing Company sell their clothes for so much money. They seem to go very, very short on labels because I can't find a, a care label in there. I don't know. Anyway, two quid. Peter's been selling his sticker sheets today. Six more. It's five to one person. They're going then, Peter. That's good. Uh, all of these for a pound. Is that correct? Am I telling the truth? Quid for all of them. 99% sure this was a quid for all of them. Yeah. Um, now, normally I'm quite up on my comforters, and yet I don't know where these are from. I was peering at it earlier on. Normally your care tag says, you know, packed for blah, blah, blah. Just says baby. I think that might be. Is that boots? And it just says baby. Primark is early days. As the George usually says George on it, George baby. So I'm not sure, just baby. But I've got two heffalumps. Again, they all say baby. Made in China. EAN numbers, but no shop no, no shop name on there. Two heffalumps, one babbit, 
What did she do? <laughs> Donna's in. Good morning, Donna. And hi, J Ben. It's not morning anymore. Sorry. Good afternoon, Donna. And good afternoon, J Ben. And this is Jelly Cat. She's still got her tag on a string around her neck, which is unusual. Um, she's Beatrice Bunny. She's certainly not new. She might still have her tag on, but she's not new. She's been a bit loved, bless her. But um, even so, but like I said, I'm fairly sure that was four for a quid, although I'm doubting myself now. Lex is watching Flat Earth documentaries. Did you see that picture that went around the internet the other day of the Flat Earth Society? And one guy had a, a cone head, basically. I'm pres presuming it was Photoshop, because I don't think anybody actually had that head. Two of these for a quid. These are minging. They are... They smell nasty, they are dirty, they are stained, but they are Marks and Spencers, so I grabbed them anyway. They're not the most, oh god, god dropping stuff. Um, they're not the most desirable ones, but they were two for a quid, so, but they are going in the wash. Jay Burns says, no idea what time or day it is, never mind the time, and Lex says, it's morning till I finish. It could be morning all day then, couldn't it? Oh dear. Another grow clock to add to my collection of grow clocks. Flipping wires come over. I seem to have run out of rubber bands. Where do all the rubber bands go? I'm always picking them up and thinking, I'll keep that. There's a handy rubber band. And yet, when I want, there's one. When I want one, there's another one there. So, another grow, grow clock. Grow, grow, blah, 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 another grow clock. I've sold one this week, so um, we're just replenishing. That's fine. That was a pound. These are the mugs that were 20 pence each. There we go. I found the 20p mug. So that's a nice 3D Eeyore mug and a non-3D Eeyore mug. Both Disney, I believe. Yep. This one is Queen's Disney and this one is Disney Store. So. Oh, speaking of Queenie, didn't she do well? Got to be impressed with a woman of 92 who doesn't punch Donald Trump in the bollocks. Got to be impressed with that. Don't know how she stopped herself. Uh, Saz Guest says, so my first confidence last week, one pound into 25, all thanks to you, Carla. Thank you, you're very welcome. I don't see how it's thanks to me. You bought it, you listed it, you sold it. It's not thanks to me. <laughs> it's all your own work, love. <laughs> this is a Peruna skirt. I think this needs a wash as well because I think it's, it's it's got a tie belt and I think the belt's a bit grubby. So I don't I don't wash all the clothing I buy, but sometimes you just look at it and think, yeah, it's got the funny little caught up sides with the button detail. So, but Peruna's odd like that, isn't it? Peruna always adding little extra details. So that'll go in the wash with the stinky elephants. That was a pound. Oh God, sorry, my nose is itching like mad. Ah. Going on, Grumpy says, why did you say that? Why did I? Why did who say? Why did I say what? Was it me? Did I say something I shouldn't have said, or something that you wish I didn't say? Brian says, using all your rubber bands on those cash wards you're bringing in on all those sales. That's what it is, yeah. Death by Glamour question. Have you ever had to tackle mildew marks? Any success? Yes, I have. And no, I haven't had success with them. They're extremely difficult to shift. I have um, that bag that I bought last week, the jewels bag, and I said the lining was filthy. Some of that was mildew. I have had it soaking in um, stain remover for a week. I have washed it several times. It's now on the line. I'm hoping the sun will bleach it back out. But apart from that, I have no hint for mildew. I know you can get um, those little stain remover things, the stain devils. I know you can get one of them for mildew, but I'm not, I don't own one and I haven't tried it. So, yeah. Um, Gashead64 says, hi, Carla. Missed the car boot today. I've done my ankle and hope you picked up all the bargains. I did, every single one of them. And I've offended going on grumpy by saying that about Donald Trump. I'm allowed to have my own political views. I'm allowed to share my political views. You are allowed to hold yours. If they're not the same as mine, they are wrong. <laughs> and I'm sure you feel the same about mine. So um, we can leave it there. We can leave it there. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Monsters High. Monsters High. I can't remember what he's called. I don't think he normally comes with a flipping apron. I think he's pinched somebody else's apron. I've sold him before. I'm sure I have. The boy ones are usually worth picking up. I got him for a quid. He was marked at two, but I paid a pound. Jay Ben says, thanks to you lot, Hubby's opened a craft and reselling business, and now I've got loads to do. Funny how that goes. <laughs> okay, guys guys in the chat, do not start fighting over politics. Don't do that. that, that, you know, that it's, it, it's just going to end badly. Hyperpicker's in. Good morning, Claire Riley's in. I think I've already said hello to Hyperpicker. 
I'm not sure. Hello, anyway. And Claire Riley, good morning. These are US Brass, which is not a brand I had heard of before. I paid four quid for them simply because they look very little worn. They're kind of dusty as though they've been lurking around. Um, they smell cupboardy, garagey. Cupboardy, garagey. Um, yeah, don't know. But I paid a pound, no, I paid four pounds, and I think I'm probably going to get 25 for them. So, but they, they do need a clean up. Uh, Teresa Webster's in. Hi. Uh, Death by Glamour says, I bought a job lot of 230 dresses off a lady. She said she had a dampness problem a while back. A couple of the dresses have been destroyed with mildew spots, tried everything, can't get them out. Yeah, I'm, I like, don't have any hints, although you could. They, I know they make a stain devil for mildew, so it might be worth a try. Maybe the Google's got some ideas. The Google. Call it the Google. It's, it's a family thing. Going on, Grumpy. No, I don't talk about other countries' leaders that way. Okay, well, you, you, do, you do you, and I'll do me, and we'll all be happy. Apart from the people who aren't happy, and I can't do anything about them. This is uh, Harry Potter and the Chris Child. I paid a pound for this, and it will go in bundles with the rest of the I personally don't believe it. I don't see it as a Harry Potter book, <laughs> on account of it being written by other people and written afterwards and being more of a play script than a actual novel. So I'm trying to peel this off without tearing the cover. Cubbardy is a cologne scent. Yes, it's cubbardy. It's also a word in Scrabble. Cubbardy. <laughs> Excellent. Would bicarb of soda help? Was that the mildew? Maybe. Might do. Don't know. Ask the Google. Yeah, so that'll go in a, in a Harry Potter bundle. And another big button phone. This one is the BT one. Is that last week? Last week was a, a, somebody other. I can't remember. I can't remember the brand from last week's, but this one is a BT one, and I paid two for this one. I think might have been three. I can't quite remember. I know the chap was telling me that it had belonged to his father. His father had recently passed away. And we got into a conversation about how his father had dementia or whatever. And all of that has caused me to forget how much I actually paid for it. But it wouldn't have been more than three. It was either two or three. Hmm. That's the warm one. This is the cold one. Made a mistake there. There. Al's attic is, is in. Good morning. Yeah, death is going. Death by glam is going to try the um, bicarb. Borax is. Um, it's, it's, I know it's quite a harsh chemical, borax, isn't it? Because they use it for cleaning out drains, I think. But I don't know. I'm not. I'm. I'm not a science major. <laughs> not going to tell you what borax is in case you get it wrong and you end up burning your face off with it or something. It's all my fault, and I'll feel terrible. I got a Cartman. Cartman was a pound. They wanted two. They took a pound. I usually sell Cartman for about 15 quid, so quite pleased. I left a Kyle behind. Kyle was in Kyle was in a bad way. Or was he a Stan? He might have been a Stan, actually. Either way, he was not having a good day. He was the worst for wear. All of this hammer stuff cost me six pounds. That is slightly more than I would normally pay. But I was, in my defence, I was haggling with a child. <laughs> And I'm not not quite as mean as I wish I was when it comes to haggling with a child. So, um, big box of Harmer Beads, 10,000 Harmer Beads box, and that's practically full. An extra tub of that would have been 4,000, but that looks like about three quarters full, doesn't it? So we'll call that maybe 2,800. I know 3,000 is, is three quarters, but I decided it was slightly less afterwards. <laughs> Maths is not that bad. Uh, and then another tub of the IKEA ones, and that's completely full. Said that had never been opened. And two packets of the various shaped boards. So that will all go on as a bundle, and I will probably be looking at 20 ish for that, I hope. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Lex Oliver says, haggling with a child, just poke him in the eye and run away with it. It's quite a nice child. It had manners and, and a nice smile and didn't smell and wasn't screaming, I want, I want, and stamping up and down like another one that I saw. Ah, Anne Isaac says, I've used borax to good effect in removing rust marks from antique linens. Yes, you should probably avoid eating borax or using it as an exfoliator, but otherwise it's not that toxic. There you go. You want Anne Isaac for that. She knows about borax. And Brian says, kids are the easiest to haggle with. You just lean in and whisper threats about harming their parents. So I've heard. What if they like their parents? They might like their parents. Or what if they don't like their parents? What if, what if your threats are exactly what they want to hear? 
I bought me an electric can opener because how hard is it to buy a can opener that does what it says on the tin that will open a tin? Can't open none of I, I must have bought a hundred can openers in my lifetime. I should have shares in can opener companies, and yet none of them will open a sodding can. Whether this one will or not remains to be seen, but it was one pound fifty. No, it wasn't, it was a pound. It was a pound. So I bought that. I'm going to take it down and open a can that I don't even want to eat out of in a minute. Most cans have ring pulls now, but every now and again you get that one that doesn't. Or the dog's food. Dog has butchers in a tin and the ring pulls are crap on there. You pull it and the ring pull comes off. So, um, so yeah. Got myself a can opener. I know how to live. Sparrow's End is in. Hi, Mel. Good afternoon. Been a lazy beggar and only just got dressed. Apparently everybody in the chat's in their, in their dressing gowns, Mel, so you're well ahead of all of them. Uh, Al's Attic says, how are sales doing? I'm trying best off on everything from today. Sales are slow this week. Slow, very slow. Um, hoping they'll pick up a bit today. You never know. I've got I've got a couple of parcels to do, but yeah, not that great. Uh, Scooby Shaggy has this can opener. Is it any good, Scooby Shaggy? And Carrie says, I have been through so many can openers. Let me know if any good. I will become an ambassador for that can opener company if it actually opens cans. Catherine Graham is, oh, sorry. I've already said hello to Catherine Graham. We've been, we've been telling jokes earlier on. Not telling you my best one. I'm saving that for another time. I got a Prince Lionheart um, slumber bear. I think they're called or something like that. And they come with this with the silky comforter, and it I think it makes like little snoring noises or breathing noises or heartbeat noises or something like. That. I can't remember exactly what it does, but it's way to sleep. The only drawback with this one is that its cover from its battery compartment is missing. But it, it velcros shut, and I shouldn't imagine that'll make too much of a difference. So. Once that, I mean, it's, it's for tiny babies anyway, so not the age of baby that would be sticking their fingers in there. Nigel says, neighbour had a bonfire the other day. I keep on dropping stuff. Set fire to his shed, which in turn set fire to his garage, and then mine. Everything that survived has heavy smoke damage. No. Should have checked the contents cover as all the stuff is as good as gone as a write-off. This is not feeling sorry for myself message, although I do a bit, but rather something to think about, guys. Nigel, that's terrible. Could you be covered on his insurance, even if you're not covered on yours? Is that worth pursuing? Kimberly says, caught your live twice. Now her kids on mute, Carla's on. <laughs> oh, that's terrible, Nigel. And like I said, maybe, maybe look into whether you can claim on his insurance, even if you can't claim on your own. Brian says, I've just returned from a morning walk on the beach before the lame tourists clutter up. No, I'm not a tourist. You don't live there, Brian, which means you're a tourist. <laughs> That's how that works. People what do not live there and go there for a holiday. They're the tourists. I really have got an itchy nose. Anne said, by the old ones from charity shops made before the managers worked out, they'd make more money if they didn't last. At least if they break when you bought from a charity shop, you've only wasted 25p. Is that can openers? Are we talking about can openers? And Lex says, what a Speedy Gonzalez put under his carpets. Underlay, underlay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry, Nigel. I hope you can um, rescue some of it. I don't, I don't know what to do for smoke damage. I don't even know what to do to get the smell of smoke out of stuff. But that is the only thing you can do, Nigel, is console yourself with the thought that you didn't pay for it, what you're trying to sell it for. This is what I console myself for when Hermes smashed something. I go, OK, well, I haven't lost that much. I've only lost... 50p or whatever you know and, and i know that's that's small help really that's that's not um yeah that's not that's not much consolation to you is it i'm sorry really sorry mate i bought another one of these because the gentleman was there this is the only one he had left in this i always say flavor i mean fragrance this is the purple petals and oh no this is a different one last week i bought marshmallow and crusty bogies or something this is purple petals and smoky sky so it is different it's nice though but he had lots of the green ones. I don't like the smell of the green ones. God, I think I'm allergic to something this morning. My nose is itching like hell. Leah's in. Good morning, Leah. I hope you're feeling better. Leah's been very, very poorly. Very, very, very poorly. She's still sick, apparently. Oh, God. I hope you feel better soon, Leah. Put her in the top for 50p. It's a bit screwed up. But I liked the colours. Pretty colours. There we go. This is a very precarious pile, as usual. J 
Jay Ben says, Sue Davidson suggests putting clothing that stinks of cigarette smoke in a bath of cold water and leaving it for a while and then washing them normally. It has to be cold water first, though. I do remember her seeing her say that. That might be worth thinking about, um, Nigel. I don't know what your stock is, but if it's clothing, then maybe that will help with the smoke smell. Maybe. Mrs. Carroll's in. Hi, Mrs. Carroll. And Leah's actually been out and about. She's managed to get some charity shops today, so she's been uh, feeding her need for shopping. I'm really done with this haul. Two spuds. One pound fifty for the two. Don't know how many bits they've got in them because they were all their bits were packed inside. But I, I, you know, I picked up a shook and I can feel that there were quite a few bits. Can't even get the buggers open. Come open, Mister Spud. There we go. Yeah, fair amount of bits in there. And I've got loads to put in a bundle now. So absolutely loads. I should pull my finger out and do that really. A fossil bag. Now fossil is usually quite nice. Lady had wanted £2 for this one. It's a bit stained inside, but it's um, probably going to go through the machine, to be honest. Uh, no £20 notes in the pocket, sadly. There's your fossil logo, just in case you're looking for that. Hyperpicker says, with the top, put the word tassel in the listing, maybe 1980s look. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite 80s, isn't it, with that, that um, geometric diamond pattern. So, yeah, £2 for that. I thought that was quite nice. Like I said, I'll have, have to have a wash. I'll have to go and put the machine on in a minute. Five Worlds of Grimmage DVDs. They come in a box set of, I believe, seven. He had all seven. However, two of the cases had no discs in. So, um, two pound for the five. And it's just a shame that I couldn't get the other two. I don't know if they all come out of one series. I don't know how many episodes there were in a series. Does anybody remember? Of course you don't. You're not as old as me. But, yeah, five for two pounds. And two Slim World books for a pound each. Slim World Christmas and 50, ooh, ka -ching, 50 free green recipes. Now, if that says green recipes, that implies that that's fairly old. And this one's got original green and extra easy sins in. But that is not, don't let that put you off if you're picking up Slim World books. They like the older stuff as well. It's an offer. It's an offer on a pair of shoes. I've got them on at 13 99 and the offer's coming at five pounds. Is it just me? Do other people find that rare? I find that rude. I find it rude. It's, it's basically going, your item's shit. It's worth nowhere near what you say. I'm not fucking paying that for it. And I'm like, okay, don't buy it. Yeah, I find that rude. I shall counter, and they will either decline or go away or something. Uh, Alzatic says, how's your slim world going? It's not this week. I've not been on at all. Not remotely, not even a little bit. No plan whatsoever. Yesterday, I didn't eat anything that wasn't beige. I ate sausage rolls and donuts and chocolate, anything that wasn't, you know. Bear in mind that healthy food is generally green. Not so healthy food is usually beige and brown. <laughs> yeah, other people find it rude as well, not just me then. Brian says, I've never offered anywhere near 50% off. Which, but which direction are you going in? Are you, are you, do you mean you normally offer 10, you know, like slightly less or you won't get that low or you won't get that high or what? And Isaac says, Carla, try the, I think you may be looking at the wrong shoes response. <laughs> so we'll start packs. Yes, pick them up. Um, definitely make sure they've got the, the actual main plan book in there and you may have to remove pages that have got people's personal details on or cover them up with a stick or whatever. But, yeah, they're, they're definitely worth picking up. You can usually get them quite cheaply. The used ones you can usually get 10 to 12, maybe 15 for. Sorry about this nose, everybody. I'm allergic to something. 10 to 12 or 15 for the used ones, depending on how used, you know, how, how many pages you've been written in. And a brand new one you can easily get 20 quid for. So, Fab Fifi's in. Hi. Uh... Death by Glamour says, I had a message last night from a woman asking, can buy a collect and pay cash on cash on collection? Lives in the same town as me. I'm no, sorry, not into people calling to my door. I guess, yeah, I guess that's up to you. I mean, I, I do cash on collection if I'm in the mood. If somebody asks me and I'm in, I'm in the mood, I'm like, yeah, but I'd much rather sell on eBay and, and on dispatch through eBay and get it done with a degree of distance. I've got a spot there. Hyperpicker says, if it's just a few times, I can brush it off, but since it's happened more than that, it's very annoying. Is that the offers? I've started to put um, auto decline on at uh, 50%. I do wish you could bulk edit all of your listings to automatically decline at less than 50% because I would go back. I've got 900 listings. I would go back and do them all at like that. 
Brian says I made some sausage rolls the other day. It's now your turn to make a US dish of my choice. Trust me, I did. I just forgot to film it. They turned out great. I think you need to prove it. I don't think you can just go, it's your turn now without proving that you did your share. I don't think you can do that. I think that's cheating. I really do. But now you've made them once, you can make them again. And and take um take some um, pictures this time. Mrs. Carl wants some fabric softeners make mine. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if it's dust off of some of this stuff or maybe it is a fabric softener or what. But something it it started with the polystyrene out of the um bad taste bears box. Peter says someone just gave me an offer for my World Cup sticker sheets for full price, even though I have offer on an auto decline that was accepted. Death by Glamour says, yes, I want to keep it business-like for myself. She wanted a dress, so I thought if you were ordering from a company's warehouses in the same time as you, would you go knock on the office? That's a good point, yeah. Yeah, and Cat's Rant says, yeah, I also declined 50% and under two, just bloody rude. Yeah, I, I don't think, I'm all for haggling. I, didn't, I wouldn't put best offer on if I wasn't going to use it, but I do think it's rude to start at less than half. I really do. <laughs> Last item for my haul. I'm just going to show you one of them. It's a pair of curtains. What colour is this? Kind of a metallic-y, purple-esque finish. Purple-esque, not a thing. Mauve, metallic -y mauve. Either way, they are ring-top curtains. They are by a brand called Sundor. They were only a fiver. Um, I really quite liked them. I don't have anywhere for them to go, so I probably will end up selling them. My main reason for buying them is that I was halfway through discussing them and holding them in my hand and discussing them with the seller. And another lady came and tried to tug them out of my hand, at which point I went, Fiverr, yeah, here you are. <laughs> I would have bought them at 50 quid at that point. Don't take things out of my hand, again, with the rude. Grape. Jason says that's grape. <laughs> Brian says it's yellow and white. Mauve. Mauve, yeah. Heather. Heather's a nice word. Yeah, see? Heather it means the same, but just a bit more of an attractive word. Yeah, worth, worth considering. Yes, maybe I'll call them Heather when I sell them. But that's it. That's my haul. Nothing. Nothing. I think the Salvatore Fer Salvatore Ferragamo bag with the perfume in is probably the best pickup of the day. Nothing else is excessively exciting. Although I haven't checked prices on the bag yet, the fossil bag. I haven't checked prices on the jelly cat. Some of the jelly cats can turn out to be worth good money. Yeah. Nothing, nothing very exciting apart from the Far Farragamo perfume. <laughs> Sue Emma says, Midnight Blue, Purple, Mauve, Spooky Heather. Death by Glamour's had a ka -ching. Carrie says, I don't think I'll have much luck selling my England shirts and kits until the next Euros. Deborah Stevens is in. Hi, Deb. Who's that bloke with you in your little picture there, Deb? Mrs. Carroll says, Lavender. What more people were searching for purple. I'll put purple in as well. Heather purple I'll put in. Lex Oliver says, where's Natalie and her bacon saga today? Natalie's probably keeping her head down today. You weren't here at the beginning, I don't think. Lex, so you missed the bit where I re explained one of the reasons I'm late is that Natalie left her work keys in the glove box of my car and rang me to come home from the car boot sale to bring the, her, her work keys because she needed to go to work. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Oh, it's the secret man. I see. It's not very much of a secret if you've got him in your profile pic, with you? Purple haze, if we're going to get a bit prints about it. So, yeah, Natalie is presumably keeping her head down and not, not ruffling her mother's feathers too much after that little saga. Brian says, I was prepared to fund Natalie a full eight-course lunch. I come here week after week, laying my soul out for you guys. Hours and hours, well, 49 minutes of of solid work and who do you super chat natalie for a flipping bacon fund there's no justice no justice i show you all these exquisite treasures i am struggling with the straight face but i'm gonna hold on to it these exquisite treasures which i slave around the car boot cell and 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 you know prostrate myself before small children to to buy these these items of wonderment to come and show you and you send natalie bacon money it wounds it wounds it's like a knife to my heart where's your heart it's like a knife to my heart 
It's, it's, I, I mean, I, I don't think you understand. Oh, Lex understands the agony. <laughs> Lex is just super chatting, too proud to say, I'm a bat. <laughs> And I literally, I think if I could do a Welsh accent, it'd be, have a bap, have a bap and shut up, woman. That's not Welsh. What's that? What accent's that? Carol's off to the beach. Have a good time, Carol. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jason's, Jay, now I'm having bacon in me bap. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> Let, following on a Bruce says, can anyone else hear violins? I can do a really good violin impression. Although, this is my violin, right? Ready? I did that in front of um, Natalie's friend's daughter yes she didn't know what it was she said that's not a violin i said how is that not a violin there's the violin <laughs> blatantly a violin she said violins don't sound like that there's a point but can anybody make a violin noise no exactly oh Anna isaac says carefully selected and curated treasures indeed indeed <laughs> jay ben says carla's already got big maps I like big baps and I cannot lie. <laughs> Teresa Webster says, what is a bap? A bap is a large, flowery bread roll. Um, whereabouts are you in the country, Teresa? Or, or even if you're in this country, maybe you're not in this country. If you're in the north, it might be a barm. And Brian says, the kid has no imagination. Exactly. Like, me, me, me. It's even like June, isn't it? Or is that the Hovis, Hovis advert? I don't know. That might be the Hovis advert. No, that's Emmerdale Farm, isn't it? It's gone now. Okay, Teresa Webb says in Florida. I don't know what it is. It's it's a it's a large flowery bread roll, you know. I don't know. I don't know what Floridians bread rolls look like. I, I don't know if you only have the kind that you bake at home and they're quite small and with quite a hard crust, but a bap is much more of a soft bread roll. Usually, like I said, pe people are going wild with 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 not in British words for bread rolls now. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know if, whether Floridians have the kind of bread the bread rolls that you bake at home and they're dinner rolls. You know, it's not like a dinner roll at all. Yeah, everybody's got a thing of burger goes in. Not quite, you see, because burger burger rolls tend to have sesame seeds on the top, don't they? And that's that's that that's, it takes it into another. What? Where has my chat gone? Where has my Sunday carefully curated and selected treasures display and discussion gone? We are now having a twenty-minute discussion about bread rolls. But Brian says we don't eat bread in the states. What is a bread? <laughs> you do eat bread. Plus. Oh, yeah, see, Teresa's cat head biscuits here. Don't know. Is that is it? Is that? I thought the biscuits that you guys have, where you have biscuits with gravy, I thought they were more like our scones. Uh, <sighs> don't know. I wonder if this is Shoe Woman. Shoe Woman has risen somewhat in her... In her um... Shoe Woman has now gone from five to eight. I misread her name. I thought it said fish. It says Fifi. I'm coming down a bit. I'm coming down a bit. Don't tell her. I mean, she'll know because I'm sending her the offer. But I'm coming down a bit. But that's as far as I'm going. Stand firm. Don't believe him, Debbie. Tells lies. He does eat bread. <laughs> Lex Oliver says it's a type of fruit. One of your five a day. Like a banana, exactly. Just like a banana. Scones as in cone, not scone as in gone. Scone. It's a scone. I would like a jam cream scone. I'd like a jam cream scone. No, I'm definitely scone. I'm scone, I'm afraid. I realise that this this divides the country nearly as much as whether it's a bread roll or a bap. Yes, we have bananas here. Many, many bananas. We're, 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 we're rocketing into the 21st century, you wouldn't believe. Carrie's just about to set up the barbecue. Shall I have baps for all flowery things? Decisions. Where are you, Carrie? Which part of the country are you in? I've just ripped off a piece of skin that wasn't ready to come. That's going to bleed now. Oh. Lex is telling terrible jokes. I tell the terrible jokes around here. So how long have I been on? The 71 people watching me blether on about bread rolls. 44 minutes. 71 people bored rigid for 44 minutes. It's, it's unbelievable, isn't it? I think people put me on to help them go to sleep. Brian 
Brian, that's not true. Brian says we gut our bananas and make sandwiches out of their outer shell. I would pay to watch a video of you eating that sandwich. I would pay. I would super chat you if you made a video of you eating a sandwich made out of a banana skin. Carrie's in Devon, in which case I think down there, Donna, you're having bread rolls with your with your um, barbecue. Um, Dave says, what about Devon? Devon? Have I turned two pages at once? Yeah, Deb Stevens would also pay to watch you eat that banana skin sandwich. So you just be careful, mate, because we'll, I will end up eating. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll make your sandwich or sausage roll into it that you say you've made. Alleged sausage roll. I've made a mess again. I've chucked a load of stuff everywhere. I've still got an Ned Ake. I should have to find some Ned Ake tablets. There's usually some lurking around. Dave says it's a lovely day in Devon. <laughs> I have drugs. You say I have drugs. Is that back to front on your screen? I know now I'm doing it on the webcam. I don't know if it's back to front. I think it is, isn't it? It says drugs of the legal variety. Deb Stevens is saying yummy, so presumably she doesn't get many drugs. Ooh. Shoe Woman is not going far enough with her um with her prices. Shoe Woman, if you're watching me on this live stream and going, I'm not going any higher, I'm not going any lower. Dave Holder says, I saw Dr. Uggs. <laughs> okay, so it looks back to front when I look at it. When I hold that up to my screen, I'm looking at me talking to you, and that looks back to front to me, so I don't quite know how it, how it works. Well, it's, I, don't, I don't understand technicalities. Let me watch my ibuprofen. And it's a beautiful day in Devon today. Death by Glamour says it's raining here in Ireland for the first time in nine weeks. Still very warm. Yeah, we've had um, a couple of days of rain this week. Well, I say days of rain. We've had a couple of days this week where it has rained. Oh, thank you, Sue. Sue's just put another two euro into the bacon fund. I don't know where Sue is that it's coming up as euro instead of pounds, but thank you, Sue. <laughs> Lex said it's the right way around, but I'm upside down. I would believe you. Honestly, I would believe that. As I was saying, we have had a couple of days this week when we have had rain. Um, but it's uh, it's blue skies out there again now. It did clear a bit. It was the day before last. It was incredibly muggy, and then we had a, a nice sort of a, a little thunderstorm, only enough to just upset the dog a little bit, and it felt fresher after that. But um, this we, we haven't had much rain really. Car's filthy. Where all the uh, all the rains chucked up all the. Dust, I suppose, yeah. It's lashing rain in Limerick in Ireland as well, apparently. Nine weeks, that is a long time. Sorry, I got I, I drifted away. So, what are people planning for their week? I have a very, very empty week. I, unless I've forgotten lots of important things, which is possible. Let me just check my planner in case I've forgotten loads of things that are happening that I didn't know about. Nothing is happening until Saturday. Look, this is this is Monday to Friday. <laughs> it's not strictly true because I've got to put parents shopping into Thursday. So Thursday will be a very exciting day. But apart from that, nothing's happening until Saturday. And because of that, J Ben's going to start on lunch. See you later. Uh, Deb's, Deb Stephen's got a week off work. Deb's will have to go somewhere and do something then. Um, although that's going to really interfere with what I was about to say. Because because I had an empty week, I was intending to do a don't spend any money week. I was going to give myself £10 spending money from Monday to Friday and see if I could exist Monday to Friday on a tenner. Um, and what I wouldn't include in that is food shopping. And the reason I wouldn't include food shopping is because it comes out of the household budget anyway, not out of my pocket. And I would not include stock shopping. If I went into charity shops to buy stuff for eBay, that wouldn't count because that's work expense. And I think that was it. I think that was all the things I decided I wouldn't include. Um, so, yeah, sorry, I'll start it. Yeah, so not, not food because that comes out of the food. that, But it would include eating out and things like that would have to come out of my tenner. Do you see what I mean? So, yeah, so it would be for, it would be £10 spending money just for me because I've been overspending recently and going through money a bit and things were a bit... Um, <laughs> so, um Brian says, surely a tenner wouldn't make it a don't spend any money week. It would make it a don't spend, it would make it a spend an awful lot less than I have been spending week. 
So, um, oh, Deb says if France win the World Cup, I win seventy pound on the sweepstake at work, so I'll buy. Excellent. <laughs> But yeah, so that's what I was thinking of doing next week is having a don't, don't spend money because I spend money without really thinking about it. I think, oh, I'll pop in Greg's and get lunch or I'll go here. And I also would not be able to include my Slimming World subscription money out of that because that would be mean, wouldn't it? That's like five quid. That would be mean to take that out of my tenner. That would, that would, I would, I would resent that very much. <laughs> Carrie said, your parents enjoy their break? Not as much as they ought to have done because they are who they are. Um, they, the food was rubbish. The, Railway was rubbish. The weather was nice. The view was nice. People on the beach didn't have enough clothes on. There were people on the beach scantily clad. My mother was outraged, outraged by this. But that's that's who my parents are. So that's their own problem. If they can't enjoy themselves, that's their that's their lookout. I'm finding a nail, by the way. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I've just caught this nail and snagged it. So I was just filing it down in case you're thinking, what is that weird noise and what is she doing with her hand and why is why is she quivering slightly? It's excitement. <laughs> Brian says, oh dear, this no spend week is sounding awful spendy. I meant the kind of things, you know, where you go in, you pop in home bargains to get some milk and while you're in there, you buy this, this, this and this that you didn't need and didn't want and didn't know you wanted. So I wouldn't include car boot in it. I wouldn't include charity shop money, but then I'm trying not to source from charity shops at the moment anyway. It would be all the little spends that I do without thinking about it. They would have to come out of this tenor and I thought it might make me a bit more mindful about where my money is going. Because it is going. Um, in fact, it's gone. <laughs> Nigel just says next week she'll sorting shop inventory and get the ball rolling again. Might go to auction on Tuesday, but storage space is a bit tight at the moment. I presume your garage is non-operational. I presume it, you know, it damaged to the point where you can't use it. Hmm. Peter Ray says next week I'm hoping for rain. There's no rain for four weeks. See, we say this and then it rains and we're like, oh, it's all wet and soggy. I don't like it. Joni Kramer's in. Good morning. It's good morning for you, Joni. It's, it's afternoon here, darling. But good morning for you. Uh, Deb Stevens, home bargains, Reese's. No, no more home bargains, no more Reese's. It's got to stop. See, she's a bad influence. It's bad influence. Have you opened your parcel? It's <laughs> so funny. Um, Deb ordered some stuff that came here out of my catalogue. I took it over there yesterday, and Deb was sleeping because she works nights, so I handed it to her son. Half an hour later, Deb comes plodding over with this parcel and says, this parcel's at my house and it's addressed to you. I was like, yes, it's your parcel. <laughs> yeah, he, he just put it down. He hadn't told her why he was there. <laughs> Lil Nile says, your dog seemed very quiet today. Buddy is flat out on the bed. He is absolutely, Buddy could not be more asleep if you had knocked him on the head with a hammer. He is proper out of it. Aren't you, Buddy? Buddy. Buddy. Hello. I woke you up. People on the internet want to know why you're quiet. Come up. Come on. You can do it. You've got nowhere to jump from. Hang on, let me move that. Come on then. Jump. Jump up. Come on. There we go. There he is. And the other one's downstairs. There we go. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, they fit well. Uh, Ryan's in. Good morning, Ryan. Afternoon sex, you. Buddy. He's talking to Buddy. Um, why are we on a budget week? I'm always late on it. Yeah, you are late. Where have you been? Uh, Deb works nights at Tesco's, Brian. Why are we on a budget? Just because I spend too much money, I need to try and stop. Nigel says, roof pretty much gone, everything black and sooty, and roof tile melted and dripped everywhere. Oh, my, Nigel, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that you've got to go through all that hassle. That is shit, mate. I really am so sorry. <laughs> little Nalf spot, yeah, Little Nalf just spotted you, buddy. Little Nalf was pleased to see you. Kai's downstairs. He's um, he's the less. Funny enough, he's the more loving of the two, but he's the less sociable. Does that make any sense? This flipping nose. Maybe I'll allergic to you, buddy. He don't care. He's not bothered. So um, yes, yeah, so I've got a fairly empty week. I intend to crack on with some listings. I'm hoping it'll be a bit cooler so I can get some photographs done. I've got about thirty drafts done at the moment. Um, they're waiting to be photographed. I've got no excuse not to be up there because it's not as hot as it was. Ryan says, I always go out at 12 on Sunday for a bit. I always spend too much. What's it tips? The tip, my, my tip for not spending too much, um, partly is um, that I will have separate budgets for separate things. So it will not include things like stock. Like I said, I'll have my, my usual bank card for paying for stock from charity shops. It won't include the food because that comes out of the household budget. But the, the other tip is not to carry it. I will not carry my card. I will only carry my £10. If you haven't got a card with you and you've only got that cash, then that's what you can spend. Um... 
it doesn't include petrol, luckily for me, because my petrol gets put in once a week and that's already done. So I don't need to buy petrol. Um, it should be easy, shouldn't it? You just don't buy crap. I mean, I spend a lot of money on bits. I pop in Tesco's for a sandwich and while I'm there, I buy several other things I didn't need as well, you know? Right, Peter Ray's off to do his shipping. Ten for the week, Ryan. Uh, but ten for Monday to Friday, not Saturday. Um, yeah, ten pound for the week, mate. But like I said, it will not include money for stock. I will, I will, um, I will have my bank card that pays for stock with me, just in case. Because you don't want to miss out on buying stock, or, you know, getting something. That... Ryan says he's lost. Where, what are you lost with, mate? Should I start again? I intend to go Monday to Friday on a almost no spend week. I will have ten pounds. That will be for my personal spending. It will be my pocket money, basically, to stop me doing all that little bit of spending that you do that you don't think about. Ryan says his Subway is £5. Exactly, that kind of thing that I don't need to be buying. I go in Subway and I'm all right, yeah, I've got, I get points and all that. So I tell myself it's all right because I'm getting points and sometimes I can use my points. But the money I'm spending on buying food that I don't need and, you know, and other, other bits of stuff, well, that's that. Look at that. That's good. I'll get some of that. I'll get some of that. I'll get some of that. You know, it's, it's just ridiculous. So it will be just my £10 pocket money for the week. And it's only Monday to Friday because on Saturday I'm having my eyebrows done and my eyelashes done and some other stuff. I can't remember what I'm having done because it's my birthday next week, you see. Not not this week coming. My birthday. Not Tuesday coming, the one after. Brian says just spend it. They, make, they print more every day. And don't do it. Spend more. Make it a goal to see how much you can humanly spend. That would be more fun. It would be more fun, but the way my finances are looking at the moment, Brian, £10 is how much I can humanly spend. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's <laughs> oh, the, the neighbour who's burnt the house down has run away. Oh, dear. Deb says, bye, Paul. Goodbye to Peter. Ryan says, happy 30th. Thank you very much. You're a little bit late wishing me a happy 30th birthday. Just a tiny bit late. Um, you are 15 years late. <laughs> 15 years late wishing me a 30th. Thank you. And Deb Steve is going, yeah, and the rest. Thanks, Deb. <laughs> but I appreciate the sentiment behind wishing me a 30th. Bless you all. <laughs> oh, good God. problem that Nigel may have is that next door neighbours insurance will or may want receipts and proof yes I would certainly take photographs of everything before you remove anything from that garage and get rid of it bye Teresa I would take photographs of everything because one of the proof that you've got that all that stuff is damaged is the photographs of the damaged stuff you may struggle when it comes to receipts and whatever but um the f I presume this stuff is listed on eBay, and that may be something that you could use as evidence as well. The fact that you know, obviously I had it because here are my listings. So I don't know if you can end those listings, but not delete them. Maybe I'm, I'm sure you can end them and not delete them. But maybe that might be an idea to end your listings, but not not remove them, so that you can um, add that in as additional proof if necessary i don't know I'm, I'm grasping at straws now mate but it's definitely worth considering ryan says uh haha you are, are you 45 wish me a 30th i'll be a year late <laughs> i am 45 mate i'll be 45 a week on tuesday yeah yeah ads is in hi ads dawn mick one's in hi dawn and Deb Stevens is, is hammering home the point that I'm 45. Absolutely hammering that home. Deb Stevens is 52, everyone. 52. Just getting that. 52. 52. That's like a five with a two next to it. Just saying. <laughs> and Brian says, Ads is here for the final few moments. Those are the best few moments, you know. <laughs> Brian says, old is gold, as they say. <laughs> Yeah, evidence the listings that were put up before the fire should convince that the price haven't just been manufactured to take advantage of the insurance. Al's attic says you don't look a day over Thursday, over 30. Bless you, my child. And I believe spec savers have a special offer on this week. <laughs> oh, my itchy nose is annoying me. Is it annoying you guys? This itchy nose? Is it driving you as well as it's driving me? Oh, 
I have to go and take an antihistamine. I've just brought some. They're downstairs somewhere. Right. It's been best part of an hour, I think. It's been an hour. It's been an hour. It's been lovely to talk to you all, as always. I've lost the... Um, I've just realised Sib K's not in. What's happened to Sib K? I've closed the chat. I don't know how I managed that. It's all it's all going horribly wrong. Yeah, no. I've, has anybody seen Sib K? Is he, is he all right? I'm sure I saw him the other night in... I saw him Friday night in Zaheer and Beck's chat. So he was he was all right then. Uh, Ryan says, why are things a bit tougher, Carla? Mainly lack of sales or what going on? Sales have been slower, but more to the point, I have some large outgoings that have outgone and um, they have left me just a little bit high and dry. So that's, yeah, just just life. Just like it's life, Jim, but not as we know it. <laughs> Brian says, the older the berries, the sweeter the juice. I'll see myself out. Yeah, don't forget your coat, mate. <laughs> Many a tune played on an old fiddle. That's my glamour. I'm making her nose itch. Sorry, everybody. If everybody's nose is now itching. <laughs> oh, Sib K is listing a thousand items. Is that why we're not seeing him? Right. And Ryan says he's tied him up. <laughs> An extra strong bin's just coming in time to say goodbye. Hello, extra strong bin. We're just going. <laughs> um, Debbie, are you coming over to boast about your young man and, and that you're enjoying so much in your old age? <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm, I'm off uh, to tidy up my tat, to put some stuff in the washing machine, um, to test out my can opener, because that's how I roll. And I might change the sheets on the bed today as well, because they're not a bit of thrill. They're only changing because Buddy keeps sleeping on the bed and he's a stinky boy, aren't you, Bud? Stinky, stinky boy. How old's your man, Deb? He's not 52, is he? He's not 52. He's not. I, 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 13 years between them, is it? Something like that. She'll tell you now. She'll come. She'll bat, She'll brag now. She's very proud of her toy boy. That's why there's a reason we call him Hot Rod. <laughs> His name's not Rod. <laughs> Amazon just sent me secondhand goods when I bought new. Get onto them, Lex. You'll get your money back. Jason Entwistle says I'm a, I'm a toy boy. The wife is five years older than me. I, I'm not sure of his age, Ryan. I'm waiting for Deb to come and confirm it. Extra Strong Bint is 42 and her boyfriend is 26. See, it's, it's going on all over the place. Going on all over the place. I'm not seeing anyone. Young, old, indifferent. He's 45. There you go. There's seven years between them. Seven years. Anne's advising Nigel about insurance. That's a good point. Anne says, Nigel, you might find that insurance treats a third party belongings differently than if you try to insure them yourself. That's a very good point. At the end of the day, those are your belongings which you have paid money for. What you intend to do with them should be immaterial. Shouldn't it? It's not as if you're running a branch of Argos out of your garage, is it? Al's Attic says 45 doesn't count as a toy boy, I'm afraid. <laughs> Oh, Antoinette Daly has just super chatted five pounds. It says, I'm a spring chicken. She's 60 today. Happy birthday, Antoinette. I'm going to sing now, so you might want to turn your speakers off. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Antoinette Daly. Happy birthday to you. Um, tell somebody they've got to give you 60 bumps, 61 bumps. You have to have an extra one for luck, don't you? One for luck. Tell somebody that, that I've, I've sent you 61 bumps and they've got to give them to you. Make sure they're someone you trust who isn't going to just going to throw you in the air and drop you because somebody did that to me as a kid they were giving me the bumps and on the last bump they all let go jarred every bone in my body for about three weeks brian says brian says i'm 33 and i've been seeing my grand's best friend not dating you sickos just to take her to doctor's appointments <laughs> oh dear <laughs> everybody's now arguing about what counts as a toy boy Oh, and Anthony's here, and he's very offended, by the way. He's he's offended by the fact that um, he said, um, Natalie, all Natalie did was bitch about the fact that she was hungry and everybody sent her bacon money. And he pointed out the fact that he posed there in his pink pants and got nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Isn't that right, Ant? Yeah, he was offended. 
I hope you have a lovely birthday, Antoinette. I don't know what you've got planned for your birthday, but I hope you have a great day. And uh, and that you get a nice bit of cake. I do like a nice bit of birthday cake. Birthday cake's my favourite. And I like vanilla. Vanilla sponge birthday cake. I like chocolate. I'm a big chocolate fan, but not chocolate cake. Chocolate cake would never be my first choice. Strange. I like vanilla birthday cake with buttercream icing. Nobody needs to know this. None of you care. Some of you are probably dozed off. Oh, Freckles would just go in. <laughs> Joe's arrived. That's Freckles2437. She's made it to a live stream. Just got in from the car, but it was scorching. She's cream crackered. And I'm just going, Joe. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sue Erin says... Sue Erin says, I remember that day of the pink pants. I thought I was dreaming. <laughs> well, like a nightmare. <laughs> and Brian says, I screenshotted that pink pants moment and made some cash off those pics. Anthony's gone back downstairs, but I'll tell him that, Brian. Gem Gem says, um, just wanted to say thank you to you and all the other resellers on YouTube for all your help. I finally opened my eBay store last week. Yay, well done. Another one joins the club. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. Another non-seller bites the dust and joins the ranks of the selling. Antoinette enjoyed my singing, apparently, so she's she's got problems with her hearing. <laughs> Just made a birthday pavlova for myself. Oh, pavlova. Now see meringue and stuff. That's a good idea. Yes. Yes. Deb, I think we might need to go out for lunch and find somewhere that sells pavlova. I've got to go today because I can't spend any money after today. <laughs> Which kind of defeats the object. If I go out and spend a load of money today, that kind of defeats the object to try not to spend any money tomorrow, doesn't it? I think I've lost the plot somewhere. Could I say hi to... Oh, Brody. Hi, Brody. Apparently Gemma's little boy Brody always watches with you. Hi. I feel a bit like I'm in the broom cupboard on um on children's CBBC broom, broom cupboard, you know? Hi. Start reading out people's birthday cards next. and. <laughs> <laughs> What time is football and tennis on? Not a clue. Oh, the I think the football's on at like four o'clock. That's the, it's the, the final today, and I think it's on at like four o'clock because I remember Aldi and Lidl said that if England got through, they would close all their stores at three o'clock so their staff would watch the match. Now that logically must have given them an hour to go home, mustn't it? I presume. This is just my my assumption. Everybody's saying hi to Brody now. Look, hi, hi Brody. Everybody saying hello to you. So I think football's on at four o'clock, which would probably be a good time to go out. <laughs> I went out the other night when the um, when the semi final was on and the roads were dead. It was like it was like something out of an apoc apoc a, 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 an apocalypse movie. The roads were empty. There was tumbleweed everywhere. Uh, Scooby Shaggy says the men's tennis final is on at two. I think. J Ben, question: Need to open a business account on eBay? Is it right that you get fifty free listings a month and then it's thirty p listing above that? I do not know the answer to that, J Ben, because I have a shop. And I've had a shop for so long that I don't know what the not having a shop level is. But somebody else in the chat may know and may be able to tell you. If not, then check back the comments of this video because I'm sure somebody will reply to the comments of this video with the answer to that. But yeah, I have um, I have a featured featured shop. I have the second level shop, which I think is the one they call featured, and I pay eighty odd quid a month, and for that I get fourteen hundred listings and so many auctions. I think something like that. Dev Stephen says, since Nat's got all the money, football is at four. I'm not sure seeing the connection. Gem Gem says, Brody wants to be a YouTuber. He just said, oh, man, I'm famous. Oh, bless you. are. You're famous, mate. Everybody's saying hello. We look forward to seeing you on YouTube. Apparently, Brody, I don't know how old you are, mate, but apparently all you have to do is open toys on YouTube and you get millions and millions of followers and make a fortune. I, I was, I had, um, Natalie had her friend's little girls here Friday night and um, one of them said to me can i watch youtube on the big telly so we put youtube on the big telly thank you deb i got that <laughs> and she put this channel on and it was called tiana i think or something like that. and basically this child had got famous through opening toys and commenting on whether she thought they were good or not and she'd got massively famous with other kids and she had like millions of followers and, and gotten was worth god knows so there you go, Brody. What you need to do is get Mummy to buy you some toys that you can open and film you doing it, and then it's a win-win for you, mate, because you get the toys and you get to be famous on YouTube. Just like that. There you go. We'll all subscribe. I promise you, Brody, if you set if you set up a channel, we'll all come and be your subscribers, won't we, everybody? 
Well, let's just see if Ant will come and scratch your nose for you. I doubt it. <laughs> Ginger Witch is in. She says, hi. I've been saying I'm going for 10 minutes and no people are arriving. I feel terrible. Every time somebody new comes in, I feel like I have to stay a bit longer because it's rude to just disappear off when somebody's... It's like at a party when you're about to go home and somebody comes up and says hello and you're like, oh, I was just about to go home and I can't go home now because it's rude. I am home. <laughs> this itchy nose. Oh, God. Apparently we've made Brody's day. I'm, well, I'm glad he's happy. But yeah, Brody, come on, set up your channel, mate. Get mummy to film you. And um, just remember not to play any music because YouTube goes, no, you can't play music and then you get in trouble. Although you can get away with singing Happy Birthday because it's not your copyright. Yeah, see, Sue Erin says, just, that's two subscribers you've got already, mate. You're, you're, you're well on your way. <laughs> um, right, I'm going to go. I'm sorry, Ginger Witch, to disappear just as you've, you've arrived and anybody else who's who's watching but not chatting. There's 74 people watching. There's not 74 people chatting, although I know we've had some new faces pop up in the chat recently. If you're watching and you'd like to come and join the chat, it's just on the side there. And they're, they're, look how lovely they are. They're very nice people. They will tell you all about bread rolls. They will subscribe to your channel. Neville says he's been watching for about five minutes on the slide. Yes. <laughs> See, all these all these silent watchers, lurkers, lurking in the background. But yeah, come and join us in the chat if you, if you are watching. If you're, if, unless you're not a sociable person, in which case don't, you know, by all means, do whatever suits you. And I'm going. I'm just rambling now. Everybody have a lovely day. Deb, I'll see you in a bit. Brian says he's the loveliest. I don't think he is. I don't think he's the loveliest. Uh, Sue says, don't forget the thumbs up or, or, or whatever suits you. Everybody have a lovely day. Have a lovely week. Wish me luck. Deb Stephen says, at least it get, didn't get rude. I think there were moments when it nearly did. Uh, wish me luck with my only spending a ten on Monday to Friday. I will let you know how that goes next Sunday. Let you know. Something will probably happen and I'll forget. <laughs> Lex is making it rude. <laughs> I'm off. Take care, everybody. Bye.